Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. Emily Wilding Davidson, the martyr who jumped in front of the king's horse. The campaign for suffragette is remembered for many moments, but one of the moments that lives forever in the memory is of the king's horse Anma riding the bend at the 1913 derby. Out stepped a woman who became a martyr seconds later. Emily Wilding Davidson was one of the most prominent suffragettes. She lived a very interesting life and her actions at Epsom that day solidified her name in history as a woman willing to die to secure the vote for women. Today we look at the martyr who jumped in front of the King's horse, Emily Wildling Davidson. And remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. Now, Emily Wildling Davidson was born in London in October of 1872. Her father was much older than her mother, and she was a third of four children, with her younger sister dying of diphtheria when Emily was eight. Her family moved to Sawbridgeworth in Hertfordshire, whilst Emily was a baby, and she was educated at home. Emily then attended a day school before studying in Dunkirk in France before she attended the Kensington High School, winning a bursary to the Royal Holloway College in 1891. She studied literature, however was forced to leave her studies after her father's death, as her mother could not afford the fees. Leaving her studies, she worked as a governess and continued to learn in the evening and managed to save enough money to sit final exams, achieving a first class honours in English. However, she was not allowed to graduate as degrees from Oxford were not available to women. In 1906, she joined the Women's Social and Political Union. This was formed by Emmeline Parkhurt and brought together different aspects of the suffrage movement that wished to secure the vote for women. They were a group of militant and confrontational women who knew what they wanted and Emily Davidson became a devoted member of the group, leaving her teaching job to become a full-time activist and also a chief steward of the group's activities. She took her job seriously and was very defiant, being referred to by Pankhurst as one of the most daring of the militants. And she was even arrested for the first time in March of 1909 for being part of a group that marched to see the Prime Minister, Herbert Asquith. This ended in a violent confrontation and she was arrested for assaulting police and was sentenced to a month in prison. After her release, she worked for the group's newspaper and was then arrested again a few months later. She was involved in disrupting a public meeting, one in which women were banned from, and this was held by the Chancellor, David Lloyd George, and she was taken to prison for two months. During her imprisonment, she went on hunger strike and after five days was released, and she lost £21 in such a short amount of time. She was arrested once more in September of 1909 for throwing rocks to break windows, protesting the 1909 budget, and then she justified her actions, saying it was a warning to the general public. 1909 was a busy year, as once again in October she was arrested, being caught just before she threw a stone at a cabinet minister, and she was charged with attempted assault and then released. During her trials, Davidson made speeches about the campaign and she used these to help further and rally the cause for suffrage. More stone-throwing incidents occurred and she was sentenced to a week's hard labour, but yet again she went on hunger strike and she was force-fed. This was a horrific and psychologically damaging experience and was attributed to something similar as torture. Davidson, after a first force-feeding episode, hid herself in her cell and barricaded herself in, and windows were broken to try and get access to her room. The police then turned a hosepipe on her, and when she was finally released from the room, the cell was filling up with water. She was taken to hospital and was given hot water bottles as treatment, before being force-fed again and eight days later set free. She ended up suing the prison system and won 40 shillings. She grew even more angry of the refusal to award women the vote, and also the treatment that women were receiving. One of the biggest acts Emily Wildling Davison did was inside the Palace of Westminster, 
On the night of the 1911 census on the 2nd of April, she hid in a cupboard inside the chapel of the Palace of Westminster and remained undetected overnight. She was found by a cleaner but not charged by police. And to disrupt the census, she was recorded twice. Davidson continued to write and create propaganda for the Women's Social and Political Union, and she went even further. She began to set fire to the post boxes at the end of 1911 and was arrested for more serious offences of arson. She was sent to prison for six months and was force fed before she and other suffragettes went on protest hunger striking and barricading themselves in their cells. After this, she jumped over the balcony of the prison, realising that more desperate and serious action was required. Davidson wrote, as soon as I got out, I climbed onto the railing and threw myself onto the wire netting, a distance of between 20 and 30 feet. The idea in my mind was, one big tragedy may save many others. I realised that my best means of carrying out my purpose was the iron staircase. When a good moment came, quite deliberately I walked upstairs and threw myself from the top as I meant, onto the iron staircase. If I had been successful, I should undoubtedly have been killed, as it was a clear drop of 30 to 40 feet. But I caught on the edge of the netting, I then threw myself forwards onto my head with all of my might. She seriously injured herself, causing damage to her head and cracking two vertebrae. She then realised that for women to secure the vote, then someone would need to die for the cause. She wrote to a newspaper saying, I did it deliberately and with all my power because I felt that nothing but the sacrifice of human life would the nation be brought to realise the horrible torture our women face. She did fall from favour from the women's group as her arson on post boxes was not accepted and Pankhurst wanted to protect the group's reputation slightly. In the November of 1912, she was arrested for a final time, hitting a minister with a horsewhip. She mistook the man for David Lloyd George and was placed in prison, before being forced fed for the 49th time. It was with the courage of her convictions that Emily Wadling Davidson decided to take stronger action, which takes us up to the Epsom Derby on the 4th of June 1913. She took two flags with the suffragette colours of green, white and purple on them from the WSPU offices and then went by train to Epsom to watch the derby. It was one of the most famous horse races in the world and being ridden in the race was King George V's horse, Anma, ridden by Herbert Jones. Davidson positioned herself inside at Tottenham Corner, the final bend before the home straight and the finishing post. As some of the horses passed her, Davidson ducked under the rail and then ran onto the course. In her hands was one of the suffragettes' flags, and as Anma the King's horse was travelling full speed towards her, she attempted to place the suffragette banner over the horse, but was hit four seconds after stepping onto the course. Anma collided into her, smashing into Davidson at 35 miles per hour and she was knocked to the ground, toppling a number of times, unconscious. The event was captured by the news cameras, and many people rushed onto the track to help. The jockey, Herbert Jones, was injured, but Emily Wadling Davidson arrived at hospital and was operated on, and she never regained consciousness. She died on the 8th of June 1913 of a fractured skull. Interestingly, she was found to have a return ticket to London, indicating that she may not have intended to die that day, along with the suffragette flags and a race card which she had barked to pick winners in other races. The event shocked many and brought the campaign for suffrage to the front of the newspapers and the forefront of most people's minds. Much debate has occurred as to whether Davidson intended to die or intended to target the King's horse. On the 14th of June, a procession took place with 5,000 women forming the coffin procession along with a number of men who wished to pay their respects. Her actions brought together many people in what was described as the last of the great suffragette spectacles. Her coffin was then taken to Newcastle with a suffragette guard of honour and the crowd continued and remained with her. 
On her gravestone written is the slogan of the movement, Deeds, Not Words. Emily Wadling Davidson is considered by some as a martyr for the suffragette cause. The work of the suffragettes eventually was successful, as women did secure the vote later on. It was through the events of brave women like Pankhurst and Davidson who helped to show the inequality in society. But it's interesting to look at Davidson's long line of behaviour in the suffrage campaign. Her act at the Derby was just the pinnacle of a long line of militant acts completed and carried out by one of the suffragettes campaign's most extreme members. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.